Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Anna Marina from Bellissimo Plastic Surgery and Spa, and welcome to our Facebook Live event. Today, we're going to be talking to two ladies, this is Danny Wilson and Rebecca Whitlinger, and they are have merged their uh, groups that Danny used to be part of our clubhouse, and Rebecca used to be part of the Cancer uh, Caring C Center, and they've merged now, and they have formed Cancer Bridges, um, uh, Cancer Bridges, and so I wanted to kind of kick this off with you ladies. We've talked with Danny in the past and you've had so many good programs out there to help patients, not only with breast cancer, but with all cancers. So um, welcome ladies. So go ahead and just tell us, first of all, how it all got together, how you, how you merged it, what, you, what was the reason for it? And, and let's just go through what this new program or this new organization can do. Sure, absolutely. Well, thank you for having us. I really appreciate it, uh, especially for the opportunity to let people know that Cancer Bridges is out there. We don't want folks to, to think that our services have gone away on either end. So uh, Cancer Caring Center has been in the community for 33 years, providing um, really the same things our clubhouse provided. We both had the same mission of providing programs and activities for people impacted by cancer. We both had completely free services. There were a couple of differences that made our organizations really complementary to each other. So at our clubhouse, we have a, a building down in the Strip District in Pittsburgh, and we focused our programs and activities in that building. And we focused on activities like our family and youth program, our health and wellness classes, our creative expression classes in the art studio. And Cancer Caring Center focused in the community. It's just, they had some, some activities in their building, but for the most part, they were very expansive and went from um, Pittsburgh to Penn State and had a lot of support groups all over. And so by combining, we're giving the, the patients and the members, the clients, folks impacted by cancer in Pittsburgh, one place to go for all of the services that we provide. Rebecca, do you wanna add anything? Well, that's a beautiful um, and succinct <laughs> explanation. I mean, really, we wanted to merge because it's a it's a wonderful union of two great agencies. We were making referrals to our clubhouse because we weren't doing children's programs. Um, they made referrals because we were out in the community prior to COVID. So it was a merger. We worked on and off for a few years. You know, each agency was super busy, but knew that we would eventually make this a reality. And that reality happened September 7th. So it's pretty yeah. new, but cancer bridges. And we just want to invite everybody on our social media and to tell people we're here just as we always have been and we just have more services and we haven't cut anything we've expanded and we'll continue to do so because guess what covid it makes people need us even more because there's fear and isolation and we want to help people we're good and we're free <laughs> well listen that, that i mean that's fantastic because it it allows people to find your their, their way to the to your sort of in-house um, programs, but also out in the community. And so I, I think that's fantastic. I, I mean, honestly, I couldn't be happier. Um, I, I just think it's so important to have these support groups and for anybody, not only just the the, pan, the cancer patients, but also their families and and their support groups to be able to come and express themselves and to you know uh, learn more about so they can be better support systems. So uh, congratulations to the both of you, and uh, I'm you. I'm really proud of both of you for that. So so you mentioned COVID, and we had talked last time uh, last year actually in the in the throes of this, Danny, and, and you were still doing a lot of things, a lot of virtual things. Is it is it still is there still virtual programs for people or is it mostly back you know in house or in the community face to face I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, so we're still completely virtual, mm -hmm. um, and in fact, in 2020 collectively we had 410 support groups, and we had over 450 health and wellness classes, and over 1,100 counseling sessions. And even more, that's just three, three of the six buckets of programs that we provide. So we're going very strong virtually, um, providing everything we did in, in the community and in the building with the exception of oncology massage. That is the only thing um, we've not figured out to do through the computer. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, we're not trying to figure that out either. 
but um, yeah, we we had started to talk about maybe we could think about a little bit coming back in the building, but then the, the new variant really posed a problem. And as you know, a lot of folks in our population are immunocompromised, so right. had to be one of the first to close. We'll definitely be one of the last to reopen. Sure. But as Rebecca said, like we're providing so much in reducing that isolation and fear through Zoom and other virtual platforms that you know we're, we know we're still helping folks out there. Yeah, and I think as we talked about before, it it was kind of a weird situation we were all in. Everything got shut down, but it did open some opportunities and, and you have adapted, both of you, your programs have adapted quite nicely. So in, in all reality though, you may, as if you said, your programs have gone stronger and you've gotten more uh, patients and more people tuning in because they can do it virtually and essentially connect with people and really not worry about coming in contact or risking their health and when they are immunocompromised. So, you know, I think it's great that you can see that you can still do that. Um, so again, hats off to you. Is there, as you said, that there, there's probably some plans of maybe getting together or, or doing things in, in the community face-to-face? -face. Is that sometime in the near future or you just have to wait and see how this new variant go, you know, goes along? We are going to wait and see. We do have a fundraising event at Rivers Casino in November, the Light Up Gala, which we canceled last year. Um, mm -hmm. But right now we do have that in person. But again, we, we're really trying to protect the community of folks that are currently in treatment or have a family member or loved one currently in treatment. So no timetable yet for having programming in person. Okay. So again, to, to kind of help get the, the word out, because I don't want people to think that we're just, because it is, you know, Cancer Awareness Month or Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but I want to make sure that everybody understands that your your program, your organization treats anybody at any any cancer. So, you know, so what are the most common other than breast cancer? What else are you are you seeing as far as patients as, and other cancers? And are there patients that are having issues just because of COVID and being locked in and feeling that anxiety? You know, are those patients coming in to see again for support, emotional support, psychological support? Um, I can do that or Danny. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rebecca. Um, well, breast cancer is one of the biggest cancers. And um, of course we see all cancer, but we've seen a huge increase in young adults so we um, launched a young adult caregiver group. We have a big GI population, gastrointestinal. We started that last year because those folks really needed some support. And currently there wasn't anything at the time. And I don't believe there still is. So we're also aware, of course, that cancer doesn't just affect the patient it's also the family members you know nobody is in it by themselves so even if you don't have family living with you your friends are affected too so we've got weekly programs for people like a general group we have other options for caregivers and even for grieving people so that there's sort of something for everyone and I do want to say one thing while Danny mentioned our zoom groups and we're really proud of that not everybody has a computer and of course we recognize that so we also do telephone counseling which you know that's nice too if somebody has more of a private issue and you know that's a personal touch it's you know not in person but it, it's pretty it's intimate and something that really helps our patients and their family members and we're really proud that we've been able to reach out more during covid because People, as Danny said, the increase in, in service requests are unbelievable with no end in sight, really. Yeah, I yeah, can only imagine. For the first time in our history, we do have wait lists for all of our clinicians. So we're working really hard to try to make sure we can serve those folks. And we do have a child life specialist on staff. So she counsels families and children. And her, her request, actually not even request for service, the actual counseling session she performed has increased 382% since the pandemic started. It's just, it's just lights out. And um, the individuals have a really large increase as well. And like Rebecca said, no, no end in sight. We are gaining about 25 to 30 new members a month. At this point, we have hundreds of folks who've joined who've never seen us in person. 
Um, so I'm, I'm really grateful that we found a way to keep going because without us, uh, they, you know, they would have been diagnosed during the pandemic without that large community for, um, for help and, and support. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing that, um, I, I just think it's amazing that you can touch this many people and be so effective at it. And so kind of give everybody an idea. So you, you offer, you know, the Zoom, uh, the Zoom interactions. And so you can do those individually and you can do them as a group. Well, the Zoom, I mean, you could do counseling through Zoom, but mostly it's the phone. But for, we have groups groups like we have art therapy and we have yoga and nutrition. So people just participate like they're in a group, but of course they're safe at their home or office. And while people love the connection that they see on the screen, they also tell us they miss being in person, but this sure. is as close as you know we can get at this point. And as I think you said earlier, it's nice for people that if they're not feeling well, that they can just from the comfort of their own home, access our many services on the computer and you know join with others and know that they're just really not alone that their feelings are very common and very shared so when when, when patients you know we get you you get more advertising out there and and hopefully there's enough people watching tonight that you know that will slowly continue to grow for you how is it that somebody you know, can, can get a hold of you and sign up? Is it just through your website? How is, how is the best way for them to kind of get on these lists and, and try to get in touch with you? Yeah, so they can definitely go to our website, which is cancerbridges.org. We are working on our branding and logo, so we'll get that out <laughs> soon, but our new website is up and running. And the first thing you'll see when you go to that website is become a member. There's just a button you click and it's an online form to fill out, but we will help people fill it out over the phone. They can call and ask us questions if they're not sure if they wanna be a member. Again, becoming a member is free and, and everything is uh, that we offer is free. Um, but in the old days, people used to come in and we had the paper forms they could fill out and sometimes we'd sit and fill it out with them. But right now we're doing it via the website or over the phone. Okay. So what other, with this, with the new program that, or the, the merger, and you've you've got things. Is are there things that you're able to do together now that you you know that you're offering now that you wish you would have had individually in your older organizations? You know, what are the new things that you've come up with together? So for I'll go first, Rebecca, because there's a lot you were doing that I'm really proud to be part of now. So um, one program that Rebecca and her team brought to Cancer Bridges is uh, some work with a local law firm where they help folks with legal documents like wills. They help them get those prepared for free. And that's not something we had done before. Um, and we, as I said, we did su count, uh, support groups and counseling, but Rebecca's team brought a lot more support groups. So I think we're over 30 a month now. So. We have groups for a lot of different specific cancers, the ones Rebecca mentioned, but also prostate cancer. And, um, but then there are general groups for people depending on where they are in the cancer journey, if they're currently diagnosed, if they're post-treatment, if they're caregiver, et cetera. So just the, the breadth of support groups that are available is another thing they, they brought to us. Rebecca, what about for you? Well, I mean, I wish we had merged years ago just because it's been such a wonderful alliance. Um, we started a program called Happy Feed, and it's a seven-week exercise program. It's not something strenuous. It's more if you feel lousy, but you took 10 steps, you know, walking around your living room that really counts for something and it's tracked on a website and we're really proud of that um we admire and are so glad to be working directly with our clubhouse now cancer bridges for the children's programs but as i said before we were referring anyway so it's just it's a wonderful union and we're excited to work together because we've been doing it informally for years mm -hmm. Is there, you know, virtually gives you a lot of, a lot more, I guess, range to, to draw in patients as well. Um, is there, 
is there any limit to, you know, where somebody can call in from or, or join from? Is it most of the, you, are you seeing in the greater Pittsburgh area or is it extending out into the suburbs, even across over into Ohio, anything like that? Um, we actually, we have a Johnstown group and a couple of their members had moved to Florida. So once the pandemic hit, they were able to join by Zoom and kind of update everybody because obviously they weren't traveling uh, through the state. So we don't say, hey, do you live in Kentucky? You can't join. But more or less, it's greater Pittsburgh. And um, if people want to pop on or stay connected and they've moved, they're certainly welcome. And that's, I think, once the pandemic is over, and I'm counting on it being over, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll do a hybrid. Like some groups will remain online because it, our patients really like that. And some groups will be in person. So that's an exciting time and something really to look forward to. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I think everybody we know has a, has their fingers crossed for that. But, right. but but I think it's great. I mean, I really do that, and I can't say it enough that this the the virtual nature that wasn't as popular before all of this pandemic now I think has really brought people to you more because they feel safe, yeah. and even afterwards, you know, they maybe they don't want to get downtown or they don't want to get into you know drive to to the building. They can still you know take advantage of everything that you have to offer in the comfort of their own home. So there's some great benefits to that. Yeah, there's a silver lining in COVID, but I'm sure all of us wish COVID never existed, but it is true that there's been a bit of a silver lining, but we just feel so bad for our patients that really are lonely and the feelings of isolation and anxiety, but then we know that we can help them. And that's a, that's a really wonderful feeling. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you, both of you ladies, so much for, for joining us. I hope everything continues to grow um, at, at a rate that you can handle. <laughs> it, it's, it's tough when, you know, you're growing you know, that quickly. But, but it really speaks volumes to what your mission statement is, and, and you're both sticking to that. And, and so I, I congratulate you. And it's so good to hear that, you know, everything that the patients that we have referred to you and, you know, will still have some foundation and some place to go for questions and support. So if there's anything that we can do from our standpoint to help you, you know, we will just reach out to us. Um, both of you know Ella very well, so uh, she's, she's always in contact. But again, thank you. And thank you for everybody who is listening. But please check out their website. And if you know anybody who, who needs some services, please, it's, it's fantastic. Both these ladies are phenomenal and very caring. So I think you'll benefit from that. And we'll look forward to seeing you at our next uh, Facebook Live.